Welcome to Keep What You Earn, your judgment and jargon-free zone for entrepreneurs of all levels. Get ready to learn how to scale your business, save money in taxes, and create a business that grows your wealth. If it feels like the financial side of business is like eating your vegetables, well then think of this podcast as the ranch dressing to make the process a little more enjoyable. My name is Shannon Weinstein. I'm a CPA and business owner on a mission to simplify money and empower others through knowledge. I hope this episode inspires you to take action, but remember that the information we share is for educational purposes only and is not individual tax advice. Now that we got that out of the way, let's start the show. So today I want to talk about one of the most underappreciated financial statements, (laughs) as if there are appreciated ones. And I want to showcase what you could be missing when you look at your numbers. I think that a lot of entrepreneurs, when you're first starting out, and if you're lucky enough, if you're blessed enough to get good advice from mentors and from folks that you pay attention to on social media and from professionals and experts, they'll tell you to know a few core numbers, which are mostly around your profitability, your sales, your costs, and so on, which is absolutely true. When you get to like level one knowledge of your numbers, you definitely need to know your P&L. And that is your profit and loss statement. That is the basic bare bones of, you know, the calories in, calories out. What's our business metabolism? How are we doing? Are we moving toward our goals or away from them? Are we making money? Is the business generating income, right? These are the most important questions you should be answering in your early stages. But we often overlook this other thing called the balance sheet. And the balance sheet is actually a really powerful tool. The problem is it's like a stick shift. (laughs) Certain people know how to use it. A lot of people don't. And you need a little bit of special training sometimes if you've never learned it, whereas the P&L is like the automatic. So I'm going to unpack for you today some of the lessons I've recently taught in CFO On Demand around this because some of our members who come to me each month and they show me their financial statements, one of the members in in particular came to me, showed me a balance sheet and said, I have no effing idea what this is trying to tell me. I don't know how to read this, even though I get it from my bookkeeper every single month. And I thought, well, number one, I need to do an episode on this. So here we are. But number two, I was like, well, wait a minute. They're sending this to you and not giving you any narrative, not giving you any sort of explanation as to what it's telling you. And I realized that this is really common. So I'm going to try to unpack for you today. Now, I can't see your particular balance sheet, but I hope this inspires you to actually go run your report out of QuickBooks if you have it or your other bookkeeping tools. Or if you have a bookkeeper or a professional you work with, ask if they can help you run it and you know be able to explain what it says on there. And typically, I will say when you run the balance sheet, that is also how you pick up on potential errors or potential issues in your financials. So if you know how to read it, you're also going to get more bang for your buck out of your professional because you're going to be able to check their work a lot easier. So let's dive in. So the balance sheet. This is a tricky thing to understand because it is kind of like a financial health snapshot of your business. Your profit and loss is based on activity for a period of time. So you're going to see in your P&L, for example, you're going to see for the year ended December 31st, 2024. And that will be for the whole year. And it will show you the summation, the accumulation of all those activities over the course of that period. Whereas the balance sheet is like an ongoing, constant moving thing. And you run it as of a certain day. And it is kind of like that red light, green light, (laughs) like freeze. And you snapshot and take a picture of how your financial health looks that day. So it's as of a point in time. It's not necessarily based on an accumulation of, you know, a certain period. It's not based on activity. It's based on the status right now of these accounts. And what it shows you are your assets, your liabilities, and your equity. These are the three core pieces of the accounting equation we learn in our first day in accounting class. And I'm going to explain what these are because assets, liabilities, and equity are the accounting terms. But assets are things that you own. And more importantly, things that can help you generate more money. Assets include things like your bank accounts, inventory. We call them receivables or aka the amounts that people owe you. 
This could include vehicles. This could include property. This could include anything that you own, equipment, machinery. Let's say you run a printing business. All your printers would be on there. This could be your computers. This could be your office equipment. This could be anything that helps you generate more income and that your business owns, okay? Now, it has to be of kind of a certain dollar value or up to be an asset versus an expense. Now, I'm not going to get into that. I believe we've covered that on an episode. But just remember that assets are the things that help you make more money, the things that you own. So it's property, equipment, vehicles, things like that. Okay. And then, of course, your cash balances and your receivables. Then you get into your liabilities, which are what you owe. So, assets, what you own, liabilities, what you owe. Okay. And what you owe includes any debts you have. Now, if you're not financed by debt through loans or things like that, loans would be on here, but also your credit cards. Also, you know, things that are adding up like your payroll taxes. So your payroll taxes are accruing or accumulating that you owe payroll taxes each month because you're running payrolls, but you're not necessarily paying every time you run a payroll or you might not be paying your sales tax every single month. You could be paying quarterly, but it's getting collected. So that's called a payable when you're receiving money that you technically owe. That would be a payable. So you have all of these different elements in your liabilities of what you owe. Okay. And then assets minus your liabilities. Let's think about that. What you own minus what you owe is what you have left, is what you, well, it's what you own (laughs) and what you truly own. So it's what the business owns minus what the business owes is what you own. Make sense? Because what the business has in assets minus what it owes is technically what's left over. If everything went away, you stopped generating income and you were to close the business, you're paying your debts with the assets. And then what's left over is what you get to keep. And that's the concept that the balance sheet follows is assets minus liabilities equals what's called equity. Your equity is basically what you truly own in your business, your capital. So capital can go up or down in any given year. Capital typically goes down in one particular way that you'll see on your balance sheet, which is called distributions. Those go out when you take money out of your business, when you take money out as a draw, when you need to pay for personal things, or if you accidentally use your business credit card to pay for something personally. So that is your equity. So now that we understand what's in each of these categories, I'm going to tell you what this what this financial statement actually tells you. So when you look at your balance sheet, You want to be paying attention to, are my assets bigger than my liabilities? Okay, great. Then you're what's called solvent. Okay. Solvent means I have more than enough that I own to cover everything that I owe, that I'm not in the negative when it comes to how I'm being financed. Okay. That's really important. AKA you have positive equity. So being solvent means that you have more assets than you do liabilities. You also want to pay particular attention to the things that you do owe according to this balance sheet because you want to be paying attention to these credit card balances. You want to pay attention to loan balances and make sure your bookkeeper is accounting for these things properly to show the current balance that is truly owed right now. The other thing to keep an eye out for is number one, accurate inventory. If you keep inventory and you have a product-based business, you want to make sure your inventory is being properly tracked and that it reflects the accurate amount of inventory you have on hand. Inventory is a tricky thing to manage because it's not really an expense until you sell it. So it's sitting in this inventory asset account ready to be used to create revenue for your business. So you want to make sure that that is accurate so that you know how much you've actually sold versus how much you still have in stock. And then the other thing to keep an eye out for is your receivables, which are the things that people owe you. And you want to make sure that balance doesn't get too high and you're not letting people off the hook from paying you. So there are a lot of different valuable elements in the balance sheet for you to be keeping track of that help 
nurture your financial health and your financial operations. So are we collecting money fast enough? Are we paying money out on time? Are we actually financed by the generation of new income or are we letting you know loans finance us? Are we just getting cash injections from different banks or are we actually eating what we kill, so to speak? Are we able to generate enough revenue from our operations that we can cover all of our expenses. Otherwise, you have a bucket with holes in it that you keep filling from a, a good water source, aka the bank. But eventually, that water will run out. So this is a great chance for you to examine how fundamentally healthy your business actually is. And to check the accuracy of these different elements because a lot of times this gets overlooked because bookkeepers know that you're going to focus on the P&L, you're going to focus on your profit, you're going to focus on revenue and expenses. So you're not going to focus as much on these other elements. However, there's a lot that this can tell you. And there's a lot of businesses that have gone under because they ignored the balance sheet, because they didn't realize that even though they had positive profit, they were taking out in distributions more money than they could generate. Or they were funding all of their operations because of loans and they just kept getting lines of credit. And what they don't realize is that it's essentially like, if I compare this to your body, it's almost like performance enhancing drugs or it's almost like diet pills. Like you're not really losing weight. You're actually kind of cheating by infusing something into your body that's going to, you know, accelerate the process. Your cash flow can get injections of cash from different sources like banks, but it's not sustainable. It's really designed for those emergency situations or those specific situations where you need to be pulling money to accomplish a certain objective in your business. But you know that fundamentally that when you put money in, more money comes out because it's profitable. So it's really important to understand that when you look at your balance sheet, that it's telling you a lot more than you think. It's not something to sleep on. And here's what I would tell you. Number one, If you're receiving these financial statements every single month from your accountant, your bookkeeper, and you have no clue how to read them, number one, ask them. (laughs) Ask the person who's sending them to you. Don't feel ashamed. Don't be embarrassed. They would rather you ask that question than operate blindly. In fact, they would love to know that their work is appreciated because I'll tell you, it's kind of heartbreaking to find out that the reports you've been sending to your client, they're just basically throwing in the garbage because we work really hard on those. But if you don't understand or appreciate the story, it's like writing a whole novel and giving it to a three-year-old who can't read yet. So let's just close the gap and help you understand what this is telling you and help us simplify it for you into ways that you can understand. So I would say take this as as an opportunity to have a conversation with your professional. Second, if this is an uncomfortable conversation or you don't have a professional and you've been kind of doing this on your own and you're doing your own QuickBooks and you're like, I can run the balance sheet, but oof, I don't know if it's right. I'm not really sure how to attack this. That is a perfect time (laughs) to explore CFO on demand. You should come and meet with me, meet with my team and we can help you. And CFO on demand is just a simple monthly recurring membership where you're paying under $100 a month, seriously. And you can have a 20-minute one-on-one with me and you can get expert advice and you can share, even share your financial statements with me and we can walk through them together. I can explain them to you. And if you're not getting the support already, number one, ask for it. But number two, you can always add it on through a service like this. So if you're interested in joining, please click the link in the show notes to explore more and I'll see you on the next episode. Everyone says you need to get a bookkeeper. But what good is that if you don't know how to read the financial statements they give you? If you're hesitating to ask questions on your numbers, or you're not even looking at them because you don't know how to turn them into actions, we're now offering an accessible option for you to get the support you need to use your financial statements effectively. It's called the CFO On Demand. You can bring your financials to a call with me or message me privately about what's going on with your business. We will even go over what documents you need to send your tax pro so you feel prepared and confident this tax season. Want to learn more? Head to thecfoondemand.com. And the link is down in the show notes. Again, that's thecfoondemand.com.
Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave a rating and review on your podcast platform. This small action goes a long way for podcasters to get our message heard by more business owners just like you. Be sure to check out the show notes for links to information about our guests and ways to get in touch with me. We'll see you on the next episode. Thank you.